Well, welcome back everybody. We're down here at the Kinzu Viaduct and we're down at the bottom. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of heavy steel here all twisted. Quite a walk down. But if you ever get a chance to get here, I think it's worth doing. Yeah. Yeah, these are the stands. They're quite big. That's about five feet tall and pretty close to eight feet across. And they sat on these rolls. So as you can see, they didn't roll, but they were supposed to. Had bolts up through the middle and it would let stuff move a little bit. So this is the stuff that's left that they had repaired. And as you can see, instead of rolls, they've got two pieces of stainless. I don't know, is they greased? I imagine they're just, you know, there. And it will let it work with temperature changes. And they grouted these big screws in. Because as you can see, you know, anytime you put metal in a concrete, that's what happens. But it's better than it was. These are the two big knots. They walked them down until the flats were parallel to each other and then welded a strap. Guaranteed not to come loose. So, yeah, quite a quite an elaborate piece here. Yeah, so it's quite a walk up out of here. Goes downhill. I don't know what the grade is. Probably 30%. Then you come to these here, yeah, you know, that big rock right here is almost eye level to me right there. Not very far away, so, sun's bothering, sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, it's quite a hike back. Well, we're up here about, uh, I don't know, probably 100 feet from the valley floor. As you can see, we're still a long ways down. And I'm holding the camera about level right there, so that uh, probably 15 feet above us where those rocks are up there. So quite a hike. That's about uh, 75 feet away. Yeah. Anyway, get you over here in the shade. I probably won't take any more videos. We're just resting. They actually put one bench on the way down here. <laughs> and uh, other than that, you got to stand and rest, but... Still, it's worth seeing. This is pretty impressive stuff. Talk to you later. Well, we just got to the top. We made it. So, you know, 20 feet of elevation, we'll be there. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to read that, just pause that back up. And anyway, yeah, that's a Kinzu viaduct. It's worth walking down, but it's a job. Well, me and Carol, we've made it to Duluth and uh, had a great time yesterday. Visited with a couple of YouTubers, um, Squats253 and Rick Bork. Met both of them in person. Every bit as nice in person as they are on the channel. Um, genuine people and uh, anyway we're here at the uh, you know US Army Corps of Engineers this is a maritime like museum place and this is where a lot of the big ships come in in the Great Lakes which as you can see there's nothing out there right now unfortunately but we're gonna walk around the park and uh, yeah, there may be one over there coming, I don't know. You can't see it because it's in the sun, but anyway. Talk to you in a bit. This is a beautiful piece of work right here. It's a lighthouse on the end of the pier. 
built in 1909. And so something all made out of steel. It's uh, pretty impressive. All locked up, of course. But yeah, it's got some nice architecture in it. Pigeons up there. That must be their home or somewhere nearby. But unfortunately, no boats coming in. Just a lot of ocean. Well, it's not ocean, it's Great Lake, but yeah, beautiful place here. I don't know if that's lifelike for this local area or not. Just took off from one of them big buildings, so I'd say. How's everybody doing? I've been getting some messages from people wondering if I was all right. So me and Carol took off for three weeks and uh, the dogs are still a little overwhelmed that we're home because we took them to a dog boarding place, which was a new experience for them and for us. But they did real well with them. And uh, got the wood fire going over there, 50 degrees in the shop. Put three pieces of wood in it yesterday morning and it was 40 out here, and I just came out. What time is it? Well, I don't know, the clock stopped for some reason. It's eight o'clock in the morning, and it's still uh, 50 degrees in here. So the insulation, that rock wall, is good stuff. Um, definitely heat and easy out here, holding its temperature good. So anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about the trip. We started off, um, You've already seen some of the video will come before this little talk. Uh, after we did those few videos, we drove for almost a week in 40 plus mile an hour winds. We got down into, was it Wyoming? I don't remember. We was driving in 60 plus mile an hour winds. Trailers turned over on the side of the road, that kind of stuff. And the worst driving I ever did in my life. I mean, we was going head on into the wind pretty much most of the way, but it was still sidling enough that it tipped trailers over. So it, it was, you know, on, on the side a little bit, but kind of quadling. But anyway, um, yeah, just miserable. And I kind of put the GoPro away and I didn't do any more filming. I just kind of decided just enjoy the trip and that's what we did. But anyway, we uh, we went and met with, probably the highlight of the trip for me was meeting Squatch 253. Um, him and his friend, Rick Bork, I met them both. Uh, Rick is a lot more laid back and nice. I mean, he was a nice guy. I was surprised actually, I didn't know how crazy he was going to be because his video is pretty crazy but that's kind of the persona he's after he gets a lot of people like it you know it was entertaining uh, but he's a nice guy he genuinely is and uh, but Squatch is every bit as good as he is in his videos hmm, stuff starting to come down the lice and stuff but uh, yeah nice guy and uh, he was nice enough to take about three hours of his time to show, show me all the stuff that people don't see in the videos. And if you do watch his Squatch, appreciate it. Um, real, real nice guy. Then we went from there, we went out to where the Welker Farms are out in Shelby, Montana. You can't buy a tree out there. Um, you know, they make it look pretty impressive with the big equipment and stuff. Shit, man. I would trade an acre of my place for a thousand acres of theirs. Um, just, they don't do it for me. But I like watching their videos and they're an impressive bunch of people. Don't get me wrong. They, and they do good. And I think their farming is impressive. But, man, oh man, the, the country didn't impress me much. Uh, I like trees and stuff, so... But anyway, I didn't meet, meet them themselves. I saw them actually walking outside and stuff, but 
they've got a sign up says, you know, visitors by appointment only. And I understand that when you've got a million subscribers, I can't even imagine what they'd have for harassment if they didn't. So I never stopped and even offered to talk to them. Uh, didn't figure it was my place. I respect stuff like that. You know, when people don't want to be bothered. Uh, but, you know, I got to see where the boy there is building his house up on the knoll. It was actually all sheathed in and closed in when I saw it. He was walking around it. But anyway, we uh, we drove around there for about an hour. Back roads all up around that fields and stuff. And like I say, you can't buy a tree there. So anyway, the wind was blowing 30, 40 miles an hour when we was there. And uh, it, it was just terribly windy. And we migrated down south, finally ended up in, and I don't remember what state it was in, but it was uh, Cody, maybe Cody, Nebraska, or Cody, Wyoming, I don't remember. But it was where Buffalo Bill Cody, he's the one that, uh, he's got a museum in that town of Cody. So you can look it up, see what state I was in, I don't remember. We went through so many states. Um, that was probably one of the most impressive museums I've been in in a long time. Um, and it was like three or four, maybe five museums in one. There was one section to Bill Cody and um, a little bit about uh, Annie Oakley, I think it was, because she was part of his show. And then there was another part about wildlife. There was another part about local Indian culture which was pretty interesting. And then there was a uh, pad on, uh, there was a gun museum there. Over 4,000 firearms, pretty sure is what they said they had. And uh, it was a hell of a collection, stuff I'd never seen before. So if you ever get to uh, Cody States. But anyway, we were left that. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video session about what, driving across historic, a historic steel bridge. Me and Carol, we saw it on the uh, interstate. Well, it wasn't the interstate, it was just a, like, you know, one of your routes, but a good one. You don't like that old creosote falling down the chimney, do you? Huh? And, uh, we was um, going along and I says to Carol, said, that'd be kind of fun to drive across. So we whistled off the road and followed the signs. And finally, after about two or three miles there, we come to this real old you know, 1840s or 1880s. I don't know what it was. It was an old bridge. We drove across it, turned around, drove back. There's some meat farms on either side of it. So when we started it, we saw a railroad bridge at the beginning with some walking paths. And we thought, well, geez, we'll go walk that on the way back because Carol likes to walk a couple miles a day. So she, we packed and she got out of the truck. We started walking. The first thing there is is a great big monument of flowers and all that. And I says to Carol, I said, geez, I wish people would leave that stuff for the cemeteries. I says, I, I don't get it, you know, making a memorial every place something happens in the world. But that's just me. So then we walk another, I don't know, a quarter of a mile, and all of a sudden there's another bigger monument. And it's got pictures of two girls. Well, I recognize them pictures. It was them two girls that got killed in the railroad bed. And I looked at Carol and I said, Jesus, you don't suppose this is the freaking place them girls got killed? She says, I don't know. She says, but it almost looks like it. So we kept walking, come to a railroad trestle, and there was a local couple there, father and daughter. It wasn't a couple, it was father and daughter. And I asked him if that was the trestle, because, you know, the trestle just vanished in the woods. He said, yeah, he said, it's 800 and some feet long. And uh, we we'll just all stand there talking about it. We'll come find out that morning, actually, they were still having the news media meeting, announcing that they had arrested the guy that killed them two girls. And here we are, just random, driving around the country and you to walk on that thing at the same time. I thought it was kind of ironic. But anyway, 
Um, whole thing's just a sad deal. Um, you can't bring nobody back. You know, that's the sad part of it. But anyway, um, the guy will probably spend the rest of his life in jail. I, I'd have a better, better end for him. But anyway, <laughs> that's just me. I believe in capital punishment, by the way. I don't, I don't get into politics much, but stuff like that, oh yeah, yeah. I think they ought to give the damn family members each a claw hammer and tell them to go at him. Um, you know, I, I just, there's no freaking way somebody kills two young girls like that. They should be breathing air on this earth. That's my way of looking at it. But that's about the only politics I'm gonna get into. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so we ended up seeing that, which was different. Um, when we was on the way out, the media and the reporters with all the cameras and tripods was going by us, going the other way. So we got out of there just in time because when we got there, there was one vehicle parked there besides us. And when we left, the parking lot was full and there was more people driving in. So we drove out, got out of there just like we looked at it. It's all right. It's all right. The snow just came off. Oh. Snow came off the roof. It's all right. Well, that spooked the dogs. So anyway, um, yeah, it's okay, Mox. Yeah, you come up here. I'll protect you. Yeah, so we left that. Got down through Nebraska. We got some friends down there. Uh, Deb and Dave, I'm not going to say the last names because, you know, people's privacy, I believe in. And uh, had dinner with them. Uh, that was a blast, you know. Quite a story how we met them. Uh, we was in their town, and me and Carol had never prepaid for one of them car washes that you drive around your self-serve thing. Around here, you know, you give them the money and they, they run you through. Well, the truck was... Stupid dirty. Actually, it was a Subaru we was in. This was four or five years ago. And we're in line. And I'm looking at this ticket and I'm like, how the hell do we make this work in that? There's no place to put the card in, you know? So this guy drives up behind us. I get out and I go back and ask him. He says, oh yeah, that number there, just program it in. That's okay. So he got us all straightened out on that. Of course, where we was from Maine, we get to talking. Well, they was headed to Maine, not too awful long. So he said, well, shit, I said, you're only gonna be 30 minutes from the house. I, so we gave him the address and they stopped in and went out there. And so we've been friends ever since. And it's, they're nice, nice people. And uh, we, uh, their uh, son was there too, and his wife, when we was having lunch. It was nice. So anyway, um, we left that, went down through, Nebraska, down into Wyoming, I think it was. Uh, I don't remember. Jesus, I'll tell you, we went through so many states. Then we ended up down in uh, Kentucky on the way home. And in Kentucky, uh, just, there's some YouTube guys that wouldn't mind meeting from Kentucky, but, you know, getting a hold of them ahead of time, I hadn't done, so I didn't even try to look them up. But uh, we're going along in this farm down there. You know, hundreds of acres of crops that hadn't been harvested yet. And we was wondering, of course, up here they don't do soybeans. So I didn't really even know what a mature soybean looked like. And I says to Carol, I said, I wonder what all this stuff is around here. I said, look kind of gray. Don't look very appetizing, but you know, I, uh, see this guy down by the mailbox. So he stopped, he, and I says, uh, you know, he's the one that's farming all these fields down here, right? And he says, oh yeah, because he had a combine sitting in his yard. Nice guy. And uh, so they ended up being soybeans, what we was looking at. I had seen soybeans in the spring and summer when they were growing, but I'd never seen them when they were all mature. Kind of threw me for a loop how Crappy they look almost. So anyway, we uh, we get talking to this guy and he says, it was Sunday morning, about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, about the time everybody had gone to church. 
he laughs. He says, you know, he says, I, I was bringing down a couple of beer cans, he said, putting them in the recycle thing, he said, and I hadn't done it for a couple of weeks, he says, so I had quite a charge of them. He says, I like a couple of beers every night. He says, you know, you usually bring down six to a time or whatever, he said, nobody thinks nothing of it, but he says, here I was, he said, I had 18, 20 cans of beer, he says, I see a vehicle company, he says, and I'm trying to hide them in the recycling. He says, here I am, he says, I think he said he was 47 years old or something like that. He says, he says here I am, 47 years old, he says, still trying to hide my beer. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But yeah, we talked to him for about 10 minutes, a real nice guy. And uh, yeah, he did like, I don't know, I think all the stuff when he added it up, it was close to 3,000 acres, it was a lot. You know, down in Kentucky, um, and uh, so we met him, and then uh, we was just at the edge of West Virginia, Kentucky border, headed to the motel because we was going to stay in. Uh, oh Jesus! All I can think of is boom, but it it weren't. It's um, it don't matter. Down south, southwest. Um, West Virginia was where we were going to stay. We was talking to this guy. He was a logger and stuff. He worked in coal mines too, but he was logging at the time. And the husband and wife team. And uh, real nice people. You know, it's funny if the nice people you meet on the road, um, they kind of stick out in their mind just because they were so genuine and so nice. They, they were nice people. We was talking to them while we was eating our supper. But... Yeah, so then we just kind of, the rest of the trip was almost just, can we keep ahead of the storms? Because we woke up in West Virginia, and uh, we were like 12 hours from home. I think that's what the thing said. And, uh, you know, we had, they were going to get storm, uh, snow at noontime. So we left there, and, you know, we get home here and unpack, go to bed, wake up the next morning, we got snow here. So we were just added the snow all the way up through. So from West Virginia on, we didn't see a thing. But before that, we actually saw a lot of stuff. We was gone, uh, oh, I think maybe 18 days. So that's why there hasn't been any videos. And uh, yeah, the dog's glad to be home. Anyway, that's all this video is going to be. It's not really much. Uh, just a little rambling about what we did. So me and Carol are all healthy and safe. And I just, like I said, I built a fire here upstairs to warm it up a little. Because uh, I hate stuff being cold. The dogs like it out here. I don't know why they do. but Anyway, hope everybody's keeping safe out there. And we'll see you in the next one.